Welcome everyone. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are. It is uh, Facebook Live on June 29th, almost the last day of June. We are halfway uh, done with the year. Half the year has gone by, can you believe it? So uh, welcoming everyone. And I'll switch over to the panel. Uh, Today, I wanted to um, introduce you all to start off with Michelle Liz here. Good evening, Michelle. She's part of our group meditators. Uh, good evening. And then we have Francesca with us. Uh, good evening, Francesca. And then Patricia has joined us as well. Good evening, Patricia. And we also have Kimberly, who has started joining our, uh, uh, our group meditations on a regular basis. And Kimberly actually has a question. So uh, Kimberly, did you want to start with the question? And I see Ken has joined as well. So as you ask the question, uh, Kimberly, I'm going to go tag everyone on Facebook. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. My question is pertaining to um, my dreams, which, which I posted a question on, uh, on in discussion. Now, my question is, when you're dreaming and I wake up in my dreams, I am in the now. And not many people could wake up in their dreams and remember them, okay? So during the night, I'm dreaming, I wake up in my dreams, I am in the now, I am in the presence of the dream. But in the morning, when I remember my dreams, it's now the past and the situations, uh, like I said, it's, it's you're going into your dream and it's like a movie and it's a, a you could future uh, past. Um, but what happens when you in the morning when you come out and the dream is past? But you know that you were in the presence of the dream. How how do you differentiate that? Because because my issue is in remembering the past, I remember my dreams and situations really didn't happen, and they only happen dreams. How would you differentiate that? Or how how uh, uh, just being in the in the presence, knowing that okay, I am in the now in my dream, but it's a dream. How do you differentiate that from real life? Um, Michelle, did you want to get started, and I will go around with everyone, and I'll have something to say, but I'm still tagging people. Thank you. Um. I mean, dreams is not something that I, like not my specialty, but I guess when you wake up, is, is it that you wake up in the middle of the night and you realize you've been dreaming? Is that what you're? No, I, in the dream, I wake up. You can wake up in your dreams. You're still dreaming, but you're actually conscious. So you're conscious that you're dreaming. So yes. at that point, yeah, actually, that just happened to me this morning, and I said something out loud, knowing that I was saying something out loud in my dream, but then I woke up right after that. So I was kind of awake at that split second. I, I don't know that, I mean, and then when you wake up, you're just in another present moment, and you're in a new now. You know, the dream was something that you went to when you were asleep. Uh, maybe I don't understand the question very well, but it, it just seems that, you know, when you're in the dream, you're in that, you're sleeping and aware that you're in a dream and you're waking up within the dream. And then when you wake up, it's just uh, the reality of, I guess it's a relative reality that you're here now in this form and you deal with the present reality of being in this form. You know, other than that, I really don't have much more to add. Thank you, Michelle. Mm -hmm. So 
uh, when you wake up in the dream, uh, Kimberly, it's like you're almost lucid uh, dreaming, right? You are clearly seeing that you are in the dream, but it's still, the dream is still going on, right? You may be in the now in that moment, but the dream, you're still dreaming. It is not reality. It's something that your mind is making up. It's just a dream. Do you realize that, that even though you say it is the now, it is not actually the now, it's still a dream in the now. Right? Well, in my dreams, it's like I'm talking to you right now. Yes, but it's, still, but it's still a dream. A dream. Like the characters in the dream. It's almost like you are, um, let's say it's a movie that's playing. You're watching the characters off um, that are playing. And one of the characters is you. But then you also realize that you are the one that is watching the movie. But still the movie is playing. Could, could the ego also be a big part of the dreams? I think I responded to you in the morning or when you had posted about it. It's like whatever is very dominant in our, uh, during the day, right? Whatever is dominant in our thought process that will come in the dream state. It, or it may be dominant in the past two or three, uh, like if you're thinking of popsicles a lot, or if you're thinking about uh, mangoes a lot, then you'll see somebody selling mangoes or you'd see somebody selling uh, popsicles. Does that make sense? That, that particular item will show up in your dream. And I've seen that the past um, uh, two, three weeks, like whatever is dominant, right? Like I'm thinking of certain objects, that object will show up in my dream. And I do remember the dream when I wake up, but it is still a dream. It's not reality. It's, it's still something that the mind is trying to process um, I wish Caesar was here because Caesar actually does dream interpretation as well. So he can he could probably have told you that, hey, this is what it means. Um, what I've dreamt recently a lot about is I don't know why I'm always getting on a flight. I'm trying to walk this path and trying to get on a flight. So I don't know what that interpret. I, I wanted to ask him. I hope he joins, even if it is late. So, um, but do you realize that even though it is the now and you're lucid dreaming, where you're aware that you are dreaming, does not mean that you're not dreaming. It just means that the dream state is going on, but you're aware that you're dreaming. There, there's that awareness is there about your dream, right? Um, did you have any other question about that? Uh, what was the second part of your question, other than the fact uh, you were saying it's future past something? I didn't quite get the future past question. Well, in, in dreams, it's like you could dream of the past and then you could dream of the future of situations that haven't happened yet. So that's kind of where. Um, not to say that it's getting me um, confused, but when I remember the past, like I says, was it a dream that I dreamt it? Or, or going into the future where um, it hasn't happened yet? So that, that's kind of, uh, it's, it's basically trying to differ, you know, being in the presence of the now, how, when you're sleeping, knowing that you're going into a dream to stay in the presence of the now, when you, when you, it's a dream. 
Um, it depends on the content of the dream. If, if the dream is of the past, then it is about the past. If it is something that you are not familiar with, then it may be a message from the future as well, right? But then you'll have to see what unfolds, uh, kind of remember your dream and see where the synchronicity uh, lies. That's how you know that something within you, the presence in you, is calling something into existence because that is what the future is, right? The presence in you is calling something, manifesting something that is the future. Then you'll know uh, that it is, whether it is of the past or the future, but the past in the dream and your past are two different things, right? Because your past is all the experiences that you had in the past. And is that showing up in your dream? You are the only one that can uh, talk about it, that, hey, is my past showing up in my dream? Would it be the ego bringing that into my dreams? Bringing your past into your dreams? Mm -hmm. It could. If, if you have uh, some kind of, like you've suppressed the memories, then it could be bringing that up in your dream state to make you more conscious. Uh, so uh, one of the things, um, I don't know if it is in this book, uh, Set Speaks or Nature or Personal Reality, uh, where Seth Speaks is a book, and this is uh, Jane Roberts who channels this entity, Seth. Um, Seth says that our dream state is the most precious state. And he actually says, um, and I don't know which of the two books he says this. He says, don't sleep more than uh, four hours in a given period. Like, give yourself a break. Get up after four hours because you'll end up uh, remembering your dream it'll be more likely that you can remember your dream if you wake up every four hours so it's almost like he says take a nap in the afternoon and sleep four or five hours in the night so that you can remember your dream because your dream is showing you some kind of solution as well it is a message from the other realm where you're getting a, some kind of pointer in the dream and I'll go through the panel and we can ask, uh, start with Francesca and Ken and ask them as well. But that's what it is sending. And let's get more interpretations as well. Thank you, Kimberly, for the question. It's beautiful. Francesca, did you want to talk about this? Um, so I, it's not really my area of expertise, but from experience, you know, um, I agree with everything that Poonam said in relation to dreams in general, you know. Um, can you guys hear me properly? I, I bought a new headphone today, yes. so I wasn't sure. Okay, yes. good. Um, so dreams are often, you know, manifestation of our subconscious mind, right? Because when we go to sleep and when we go into that deep sleep, there is no ego. You know, it's like all our body functions and stuff continues, but it's not like we're telling our body, don't forget, you know, keep breathing, you know, <laughs> and, and so the everything, every part of our being continues to function, you know, as it should, right, and, and we're not giving it instruction, so the egoic state of mind, often when we're in that deep sleep isn't engaged, now, when you wake up, when you start dreaming, and you wake up inside of that dream, you know, like, Puna mentioned lucid dreaming is what we refer to it as, right? Um, and, and there's lucid dreaming, um, which I think is very similar to when we actually experience lucid states of consciousness in our waking um, body when we're awake. Um, it's something that I've had a bit of experience with that I'm seeing some similarity, even as Poonam was sharing, right? And, and, and so that's why I'm, I'm guided to mention that because as we evolve in consciousness and we really practice, you know, um, you know, through meditation and really embodying that which we're learning as we're learning it, especially when we start to practice like um, remote viewing and things like that, you know, we start to play a little bit in the field. 
um, we can become very lucid in the process. And it's similar to dreaming because you would find, like for myself, I move from dreaming something and it happening literally the next day. When I was a child, I would dream and then two days later it would happen. And in fact, that's how my mom, I, 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 that's one of the things that I fell in love with about my mom is she really um, nourished my spirituality in that regards. And we didn't even know, you know, the word like lucid dreaming or anything existed. All I knew is whenever my dad would send home money for us, I would dream it like the night before, two nights before and like clockwork, it would come. And so she would be like, you know, so every time I dreamt, she listened and there would be somebody walking into the yard. And then uh, last year I had a lot of experience of the lucid state, but from being awake, you know, so I would dream it and then the next day it would happen. But then here is the beautiful, um, interesting thing that happened too was as I was walking my daughter to school and coming back, as I was coming back, I saw this lady on a bike and she was riding and her dog was like running next to her. And for a, for a brief moment, like, you know, that whatever state I was in, because I meditate when I wake up in the morning, I saw that she was the, the 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 pace in which she was riding wasn't really aligning with the vibration and how the dog was running so I saw her fall and the dog fall and then within in 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 about like less than a second later she fell and the dog fell I even saw the car that that stopped and literally the car, the car came to a screeching halt like um you know just really really close to her and the dog and I'm like whoa, oh my God, you know, I, I kind of like, I felt like I woke up, right? So um, when, when we're dreaming, you know, I, I think it's an opportunity for us to see the things within the subconscious mind, like our imprints, you know, the ones that we're aware of, they're the ones that we're aware of. It's giving us an opportunity to heal or evolve, you know, or, or you know, do a little bit of inquiry, like, and again, a lot of it has to do with the content of what you're dreaming, because sometimes we dream and we do not recognize the content. And I think it was Poonam who posted a video recently about dreams. Somebody was talking, I don't remember the, the man's, the gentleman's name, but he was talking about dreams and actually um, what he shared. And I, I believe this to be true is that dreaming when you're dreaming and you don't recognize the content of what's coming up in that dream it's coming from the greater feel like a bigger collective feel right because we have like ancestral imprints and so forth that's you know here to guide us right so things that we may have forgotten on the journey right but when we're in that deep beautiful state when we're sleeping we have the ability to access everything multiple dimensions and so forth just that we're not you know sometimes most of the times we're not conscious of it so for myself if I remember my dream when I wake up then I'm like okay universe is telling me there's something I need to look at here right so I write it down as soon as I wake up and I do some you know inquiry into that if I don't remember I'm like ah okay so be it, you know, it's nothing that I, you know, I, I have to look at and, and, but I don't spend like all my time, you know, um, becoming, uh, allowing my mind to get pulled into that state of consciousness where my mind is now trying to figure out what's going on. Because that in itself is a trap, right? Because it takes us away from the present moment and presence is I woke up, I'm here, I'm now. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I just started my day or whatever the case may be, right? And then, you know, sometimes present moment could be, you know, we woke up in this monkey mind because we had this dream, right? And, and you know, the, the, the human, the egoic state of mind wants to figure out what this dream may mean, you know, what it means and so forth. So again, um, you know, the content of the dream is really important, you know, to pay attention to. Um, and a lot of that content, it's stored in the part of the subconscious mind, um, you know, that's programmable, right? Because that's where we carry our, our Im imprints and so forth. Um, that's kind of, I think, what's coming up for me to share. I'm just going to double check my notes to see if I missed anything.
Oh, and then I was just guided to, to share with you as you were sharing to, you know, just remember the, the parts that you, you know, in relation to the content that you dreamt um, when you were awake. Because my question to you would be when you were awake, right? So when you woke up and you were aware that you're having this lucid dream, um, did the mind engage? My mind engaged with the other people in there, yes. Hmm. So you, so the, that means that the ego mind became present with like how I'm talking Your with you is it? Yes. 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 Okay. So in that case, I would write like, again, like I mentioned earlier, you know, write that dream down because there is something in there that you're being guided to either evolve or heal or or it's maybe like Puna mentioned, you know, it might be showing you something in relation to the future or again, just the subconscious imprint and something from the past that needs your attention. Yeah. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Francesca. It, it's kind of like if you're not somebody that can interpret a dream. We won't be able to tell you what your dream means, Kimberly, if that is what you're looking at. Why is this arising, right? That examination, your presence needs to do that examination. It may be something that, uh, you know, a lot of times when we suppress memories, that memory may come up in the dream state. And it's showing you that, hey, look at this. Look at this memory. You're suppressing it. Does that make sense? So in, yes, in your, yes. because you're remembering it, like Francesca, she gave a, a really good pointer that write it down so that then you can look through presence that get into a meditative state and then look at it very, um, you know, like Eckhart says, even if you were dreaming of the past, there is something called, uh, what we can do with the past, Kimberly, is we can have a narrative of the past, right? We can say something like, uh, oh, like I, I could say, oh, um, actually I'll use my mom's example. Her, uh, her thing was, oh, I'm a single mother, I'm left with two kids. And they, they would be like the saga, martyrdom kind of saga story to, every time you talk to her, she had that kind of saga, right? So that's something we've added to the past. That's a narrative we've added to the past. But there's something called, just look at the facts of the situation of the past. This, ha this, uh, uh, this is my situation. I have two kids. I'm raising them. That's it. There's nothing more. There's no, oh, oh I'm uh, so miserable because I have to, I'm the one that is responsible for these two kids. All that drama is just our narrative. So that's what you want to look at in your dream it's just the facts of the situation. Don't add like drama or don't add like a lot of spice to it. Don't add cayenne pepper to it. Don't add a lot of uh, uh, thyme and oregano to it. Just look at the facts of the situation. This is the situation. And what is it showing me? Is it showing me something? And some of it may be very benign. Like I said, right, I may have thought of the uh, a certain book or a certain um, uh, object, and that object will appear in my dream, like a popsicle or something very benign. So I just know it's just something that was it, during the daytime, it was in my mind, and that showed up in my dream, showing me where I was focusing during the day, right? So. Let's move to Ken. Ken, did you want to say something about this? I know you're uh, logging off and on. So can you hear us, Ken? Uh, 
Uh, I'm going in and out. Can you hear me right now? Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay, I'll, I'm going to try because I've been a couple of times where I've been cut off. Okay, uh, with the dream state, it's funny. I feel like just me on this vacation, I'm going through lucid dreams. And what I mean by that is parts of me are unconscious and parts of me are conscious. And I go back and forth. And I honestly feel that my dreams are very, very similar. And I do feel that there's bits and pieces of information that's constantly coming through, whether it's dreams. I think we lost his uh, internet connection. More dreams. Some people could be other avenues, other ways of collecting uh, the energy. And um, I remember if I'm dreaming, if let's say if I watch a scary movie, I'm going to dream. It's all going to be unconscious fear. And I'm going to dream like crazy. If I see somebody that really got hurt, I'm going to dream. So what, what it is, my dreaming of what's coming up is what I need to look at so I can either let it go, but I need to look at what is it that's still inside of me that isn't right. It's churning. It's, uh, it's stirred up. If I listen to, if I'm around people that are upset, that will bother me. So it's, and, and so what this is, is I feel like the subtle energies that is, I'm still holding on to, when they get triggered, and they can get triggered in ways that don't make sense in the human mind, but then when, that, when I have a breakthrough, I'm like, oh my God, now I knew what that message was. So I feel like it's kind of like all bits and pieces that are coming together with the ego. And I want to say, absolutely. That ego is cunning and baffling and it will try to get a trickster. So um, it's something where um, I'm learning all the time of new ways of becoming conscious. And I'm drawn to those different areas in my life. Sometimes I'm drawn to that. I'm like, I don't know why I'm drawn to this, but I'm going to go with it anyway. I'm going to take a risk. Uh, it, could be, it could be going on a road. And I'll go, oh, well, something inside of me saying, go this way. And it's amazing. Or it could be a person that, that, that looks a little fishy. But then after I go, and then I'm like, oh, my God. So I realize it's my ego playing tricks on me. And it can be the same way with what comes through in the dream state. So writing them down uh, is really important. And then see how messages come in. Uh, if it comes in two or three different times in a similarity, I'm like, okay, that is something. It's like a green light. Pay attention to it. So I'm learning more and more how my consciousness works. And I realize that it's nothing like my human thinking. My human thinking usually will bring me down the wrong path. My intuition and what feels right is usually the way to go. So thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Ken. Even thank though you. we were losing you and there were parts that we lost your words, at least it made oh. sense. Thank you. Thank you so thank you. much. The best thing I would say, Kimberly, is not to focus on your dreams. Like Francesca was saying, right? Uh, don't focus on the dream. Look at your present moment, like present moment to present moment. Look at your experiences and grow in your experiences so that you can evolve. You will see the evolution of your consciousness from the experiences of the present moment. And then you'd see the synchronicity, right? Oh, I thought of this and this happened oh i thought of this and this happened like um two or three years back i, I was uh, 
talking to one of my uh, co-workers about macaroons and the next day my son goes out for dinner or something and then he buys macaroons i'd never talked to him talk to him about macaroons right that's when you know when those types of things start happening then you kind of know all oh, this synchronicity that whatever is me then you are really in the now that you're starting to manifest whatever you're thinking something and immediately it's manifesting and it happens to all of us um if you remember, um, Marla was saying, right, uh, during group meditation, that on uh, Thursday, she did this, who am I, she went to Starbucks, and she thought, who am I, and I played the who am I meditation on Friday. She's never talked to me that, um, hey, this is what I was thinking of, I was meditating on who am I, I just played it, right, that kind of, that means Marla and I are somehow psychically connected and we are connected to that kind of connection that we are interconnected to each and everything on this planet and each and everything in this cosmos becomes more and more evident. And that's what you will experience as you go through the whole, I, I would say the waking life, like see how your experiences are in your waking life itself don't dwell in your dream like i've forgotten I, i've watched the whole uh plane thing like two or three times and lakshmi says it's i'm about to take off or something but i don't know what that means but i do see like i'm about to what one of the dreams i can still remember i'm like um in this area like I've stopped at a store that is very um, like in a remote area in India where they, it's not even paved roads. It, everything is, even the store is in this uh, very broken down building. But then they say, if you walk three miles in that direction, that's the airport. And I'm walking the three miles in that direction towards the airport. How is it like I'm in this area that looks like it's not even civilized and I'm going to go into like an airport, right? So it's some, something like that. And I don't know where, I've never seen a village like that. I've never been to a, like I've never been to that kind of a remote area in India ever. So maybe it is a past life that I got that scene from, that in a past life I was standing in front of that storefront that it is what it is, right? It's a dream. Patricia, did you want to say something about this? Thank you. Hi, thank you. Very interesting, very interesting. Kimberly, I would suggest recommend eat a mango before you like to bed. <laughs> Apparently, according to medical medium, you're going to get revelation. <laughs> there is something, um, I guess, chemically happening with whatever manga brings. I do have a question to you because, I mean, I, I don't think I've ever had a lucid dream. So it's hard for me to, to really, like, if I have a dream that I wake up and I remember, I know that in the dream... I thought I was actually in reality. I never had a dream that I knew I was dreaming. Like I always, in my dreams, if I do something, I mean, things look weird, different, but this is my reality. I accept it. If there is a person with five noses, it's, it, I don't think anything of it. It's just person with five noses. And I'm actually, it's happening. So I'm feeling the feelings, I'm either running or watching or talking to someone, but I don't even see other faces or anything. I know it's someone, but I don't really like have a very crystal image of the other. So it's more of the emotions. So my question to you was, how come you can tell that something that you experience that it was either in the dream or in reality 
in, in this state awakened, like body awakened state. That part, you know, once I'm awake, I know that what part was dream, what part, what about other memories that were real. So that would be my question. Because that's fascinating, <laughs> not knowing. Well, when I dream, um, actually, habit of dream walking and then share dreams with other people, like my family, like my daughters, we would um, have shared dreams and then we'd wake up and then we would talk about the dreams and they would be in like in a different part of the room of where we were at. So that 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 was um, a common occurrence when all of my daughters were together. Um, but with the dreams that I have, it's it's everyday dreams um, that I that I that I'm allowed to remember. Not that I can remember, I'm allowed to remember. So uh, dreams where you're in a psychedelic atmosphere where, you know, it's like you're going into Alice in Wonderland. I don't have those type of dreams. I have dreams that they look just like real life. I'm talking to real people that I have not met before. And like I said, it's like the ones that I haven't met before, I meet them in the future. So the deja vu comes into play. But the dreams that I have about the past is sort of like, oh, my mind or my ego or something triggered me to remember something that reminded me of my past. Then I would have a dream of that situation. And it's just like like how I'm talking with you. It's it's real life in my dreams. But you know so, that you know they were dreams, so you wouldn't have a problem distinguishing. Like now we are we are talking on mm -hmm. Zoom, and you know you're not sleeping. So, right. Are there other ones that you're not sure? Maybe you were doing it like three years ago, but you don't know if you were doing it or not. Well, well that's the that's my, that's my issue. The dreams of the past gets mixed up with uh, my real memories of the past. So that's why I have to either look at pictures, ask people, especially my family when, you know, when they were younger, ask them what happened back then because I totally forgot the situation. But remembering the past is like, did I, did I dream it or did this never happen? So that, that's just something that I have to figure out. No, but do you, do you have to? Is there any use for, for, for that, you think? Well, I'm um, <clears throat> in the last three years, I've been working on my shadow self. So that is going th through past trauma. So that's kind of where my dreams are kind of, did it really happen or did I dream that it happened? But the trauma, the trauma did happen, but how do I remember it? And was it was it really real? Or did I dream it in, in a way that it, it makes me believe that that situation actually happened? And did you try some kind of um, hypnosis or to to find out to go back? Because I think April, April does those things, right, Puna? To go back to like, regression therapy? Yeah. Um, I don't know if she does hypnosis. She may be, uh, you may want to reach out to April and see if she can treat you for um, regression therapy. And if she doesn't, uh, I would say, have you tried that? No, I haven't done any regression therapy or hypnosis. Okay. Right, because uh, that state, that dream state that you're talking about, like very vivid, I think it's a, a specific stage of a dream. It's like certain wavelengths that we go to. Um, and it's only for a very specific, very short period of time. I mean, we think we're dreaming the whole night, but it's only like three minutes or <laughs> but, um But I, I love how an, um, April once described when we go to bed, our soul leaves our body and just like that would be explaining maybe why your daughters have similar dreams with you because you kind of tapping into 
the consciousness when everybody is there. And everything that happened is there. Everything that will happen is there. It's like all that quantum field of possibilities. And through sleep, we kind of can tap to it much faster maybe than through awakened state because of the way our brain vibrates. So all I know it's good to go to sleep. I love to just lie down my pillow and just like, okay, I'm home. <laughs> I'm going home. Yes, so. I'm sorry, I, I don't know if I answered your question, but um, yeah, that was fascinating that you actually have this kind of dreams because I think Caesar mentioned uh, before in one of the panels that um, meetings that, yeah, they're definitely there. Um, and uh, yeah, I just, I'm not that happy. I, I mean, not that lucky to have them yet. So maybe I will never have, but yeah, my dreams are weird. <laughs> I just, I, that's why maybe it's easy for me to distinguish because I know if it's something weird like that, it's my dream. If it's just like reality, simple here, there, work, home, but that's reality. <laughs> and because you're processing your uh, trauma, Kimberly, it may be a memory from the trauma because it's, just like Francesca said, right? It's sitting in your subconscious mind. So the memory, so uh, even though we think that we were unconscious and this is something that you will learn uh, more from Rupert Spira, like listening to him, like there is a, if you realize there is a, um, some people call it soul, somebody, some people call it spirit, right? There is one aspect in you, what we call presence or the transcendent dimension that Eckhart calls, right? Even as a baby, it was there. When it was two months old, it was there. When it was three months old, it was there. Four months old, four years old, six years old, eight years old, 10 years old, 15 years old, 20 years old that aspect in us was always there. And that aspect is the one that actually gets the experience and it stores the experience. The experience, um, and this is something that all experience, all human experience is stored in what is called the Akashic field, right? And we can draw from that Akashic field, like we can draw, um, there's a person called Edgar Casey who is uh, very famous for having done that to draw things from for the future from the Akashic field and know what, what is going to happen in the future. So even, go ahead, you were going to say something, Kimberly? Yes, there. that's the Akashic records and I've been trying to reach those for like 10 years. I, I don't, uh, I don't know what I'm doing, but I, it seems like I'm not allowed to reach those. So I've been following Edgar Casey for um, maybe for the last 20 years. So off and on, I try to do deep meditation to try to reach the Akashic records, but it's not happening. So. Right. So even though you're saying it's not happening, some part of it is coming through. Right there, there's some bleed through, kind of like things are bleeding through because you're seeing something in your dreams, something is different in your uh, real waking life, then there's something in the past life. All that is part of the Akashic record and that's okay if you're not able to uh, reach it. It requires a lot of um, what I feel is all, all of these abilities, right? Uh, psychic abilities, remote viewing that Francesca talked about. Um, all of these required like a lot of uh, non-resistance, complete relaxation, and then you are connected in that um, the presence or that transcendent dimension is connected to that field. And maybe there are times that you're connected to that field and that's what you're seeing in your uh, uh, waking, you know, your dream state and your waking, 
Bonam, is it true that to reach that state, um, I heard that monks, like they don't eat for days to actually be very clean from any food or any like any energy, any toxins and stuff. So like you almost need to go to such high vibration to reach there. And with our lifestyles, it might be not physically possible. Um, I'm not sure about that, Patricia, because like if you look at Dr. Joe Dispenza and how his people uh, achieve those states, right? They achieve it no matter what, what they're eating or yeah, diet can help, but there are people that eat normal food and however normal they are and they, they kind of heal themselves, right? They get that coherence healing. Mm. So uh, it may be that you are going back and forth in that transcendent dimension and then the ego is taking over and then you're getting those memories, a download from those memories and you're not able to, because they're not, um, like the ego wants to, in the waking state, the ego wants everything in order, right? And you're not able to make the order because one piece is from here and maybe this piece is from here, but they are not all connected and they're not making sense. So what I would say is in your meditative state, you can ask for uh, uh, clarity that, hey, show me a sign show me the connection between these events. Yeah, I see these events. Show me a sign, the connection between these events. And maybe uh, like, don't try to go get the Akashic records, just um, in this present moment, increasing your presence power, just work on that the intensification of the presence power, right? So that you can kind of like heal your trauma as well. We were talking about it, right? In the uh, group meditation, like the trauma is like, like, there's a huge stick figure in the sand, like Rupert's virus says, and you need like the awareness, The uh, he says, you need the warm uh, water of the awareness to like, you know, the water going over the beach, the beach water going over the sand and going over the stick figure and washing it off. So you need more of the awareness, more than trying, oh, let me try this. Let me try Edgar Casey. I've done 20, 20 years of Edgar Casey. The other um, limitation can be is the fact that the thought that says I'm not able to do that is a limitation in itself. The moment we think the thought, like uh, uh, we were walking Patricia through last week, right? The moment she says, oh, I'm not able to be uh, in that transcendent state, I, I move back. The thought in itself becomes the limitation. And then you won't be able to achieve it because the thought, it's all ele electromagnetic frequency thoughts, emotions, everything is electromagnetic frequency. So the thought sends the signal out as Dr. Jodis Petter says, and the emotional field is gonna pull it. And then do you have the emotional field of gratitude, loving kindness, compassion to pull the experience into your present moment? So if you want to know the wisdom of the, like know the past exactly how the past is, see it without the narrative of the past to turn it into wisdom because that's what your soul is here for right to turn the past into wisdom because there's no trauma there's nothing called trauma it is just experience something happened I, sorry go ahead something happened and if it happened that is how exactly it needed to happen. The inevitability of the isness of the present moment. And the more we can see the naked isness of the present moment, look at the past exactly how it is, then we convert it into wisdom. And that's what our soul was looking for, is that wisdom. That, oh, uh, 
the reason why uh, my mother made me miserable was so that I, I could have the feeling that I needed to get out of that house and move to another country. I would not have been here if my if my surroundings were all loving and beautiful and everything, I would not have made the choice that I needed to leave that house and leave her and move to another country, right? That's wisdom. So we have to look at our past and know why something happened. We may call it trauma in that moment that eight-year-old is gonna call it trauma. The 10-year-old is gonna call it trauma, but the 30, 40, 50 year old is going to call it wisdom. Go ahead, Francesca. Thank you. Um, I was going to say I, I resonate with what Poonam is saying in relation to the past because you're working with, um, you know, what we call trauma. Um, from my own experience, I find the easiest way to work, you know, through that or, or do our inner work from the, the inner work journey from the head to the heart, meaning from the, you know, from the mind, the egoic state of mind and the, the monkey noise and everything that it makes to the heart, which is that intelligence, right? That connection to, well, the Christ consciousness, as far as I know, that's as high as we could um, get in relation to, you know, uh, wisdom, compassion, skillful means and applying those um, that wisdom into our day-to-day -day life, the easiest way to work with trauma or, or you know, um, those imprints is to, you probably have journals, I imagine, um, is to journal, um, you know, so pay attention to your thoughts as they arise, you know, and, and ask the question, why am I thinking this thought? Who's telling me to think this thought? You would be amazed how deeply that goes all the way back to the very beginning of your imprint and where you receive the imprint that caused the generation of that thought to arise. Whenever you become triggered in the day-to-day -day life, like again, being completely present, all of this is being present. So in your day-to-day -day life, let's say something happens and you become um, triggered, you know, examine why am I feeling this way? What's causing this feeling to arise? What does this feel like? You know, where in my body does this feeling reside? And you do, those are all, you know, powerful inner work questions in the present moment as something is happening that we can ask and journal and we will actually evolve because what's happening when we're asking those questions from the present moment. And, and if you don't get the answer right away, that's okay. You could ask the same question in meditation or set an intention before your meditation, you know, and ask, what is it, you know, what is it that you want to know that you want to ask, and then meditate. I often, um, you know, something would come up sometimes because now I'm actively always, you know, because of pure awareness, I'm always actively looking at, you know, how I show up you know, when I'm walking outside to how I show up to whether I buy my coffee, the barista, the people, everything. So like this has my, you know, I'm present with everything or I try to be anyways, right? Unless there's something happening in my life that's causing the monkey mind to emerge, which is what happened literally last week, right? And and, and parts of, you know, this week, the weekend and, and this week. And, um, you know, um, but other than something, you know, big, that's a distraction. Uh, try to remain present. Don't, you know, I, I always say, you know, don't go looking. The universe will always, you have to trust in the process. The universe, you know, God or higher selves, whatever we want to call it, will always show us that those imprints within us and that which we carry that needs to be evolved. It will always show us what needs to be evolved based on how we're showing up, based on how, you know, literally it's how we're showing up as within, so without, right? So whatever programs we're running within us, you know, that's who we show up as. And, you know, let's say, for example, my daughter, um, you know, there are times when I've become triggered by her, you know, because I'm, you know, focused on, you know, working, you know, seeing my clients and, and I didn't, you know, get the chance, like say to energetically reset, you know, I pick her up from school and then suddenly, you know, I might 
you know, be in a tense mode, but didn't know I was tense. And, you know, and then she would, you know, ask me a question. I'd be like, don't talk to me. You know, those were times when I was, you know, trigger, triggered, right? And, and I didn't have really sufficient balance, you know? And then, so what I would do is like, oh my God, you know, okay, I know I've just transferred energy to her. That's not hers to begin with. So that's my first awareness, you know, and I, and I reacted to her by being reactive. So, you know, I'm like, oh, okay. So then I start to examine why did I respond that way? What is it within me that causes that emergence of that energy to display itself in such a negative way? Because I'm aware of how that negativity impacts her consciousness. It's creating a subconscious imprint for her, right? Because that becomes a part of her experience. So now I'm, you know, contributing to the creation of trauma inside of her subconscious mind based on the way I show up. Right. So, you know, as, as you know, we become curious and I, I, and this is, you know, like I think Ken was saying earlier, I call the ego the trickster as well, because um, when we become curious, sometimes it tricks us by trying to pull us into, you know, deeper into that dualistic mindset and away from presence. Right, because we become curious and then we think that, oh my goodness, we have to search. We 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 have to, there, there's something here, you know, we we have to look in the direction, and it's often the wrong direction. You know, so so the key is to reignite that connection through meditation, I guess is the simplest way to put it, and um, to your intuitive guidance, you know, to, to that higher self, which you're very capable and, and you've accessed. based on, you know, from what you're sharing in relation to your lucid dreaming, to have lucid dreams and to experience what you're mentioning that you've experienced, you're more than um, able to connect, you know, to the Akashic field or whatever it is, you know, that you, you want to connect to. Um, my, you know, my caution, and probably caution is not the right word, would be, you know, don't go looking for something that isn't there. Trust in the process and the universe and showing you in the present moment what it is that you need to be working on. You know, believe me, I guarantee you 200%, it will show up. It shows up based on how you show up to meet the world outside of you. That's oh. yeah. beautiful. Thank you, Francesca. I know Patricia has raised her hand. Uh, before Patricia speaks, I wanted to say something about, uh, you said something about deja vu, uh, Kimberly. One of the things that, uh, deja vu is right it's not something that happened in this lifetime and I don't know how much you believe in reincarnation it may be uh, so uh, what happens is just like you're saying your connection with your daughters right people are born and I, I don't know how much I, I'm not familiar with Edgar Casey's work but people are born with a certain uh, soul group soul family so your daughters and you may be a soul group and a soul family if that makes sense and all these people that you feel this deja vu about it's not that you saw them in your dream and yeah i'm seeing them and that's my now because of that now my dream is showing me the future it may be a soul group that you already knew from a past lifetime and now this this deja vu, you know, it may be it, it may not even have to be something that came in your dream. It just may be somebody like you're at a store and you come across somebody and you go, I kind of feel some kind of connection with this person. But you don't know why you're seeing them for the very first time in your life. Right. The, the deja vu is because you actually met them somewhere. And everybody, like April says, right, each one of us, like, the fact that we are here, that means we are connected in some way in a past lifetime. Like April, Michelle, Patricia, the reason, Francesca, the reason why all of us are here, that means something, somehow we are connected. If not, we wouldn't have come together, if that makes sense. And then I'll hand it over to Patricia. You were going to ask something, Patricia? Thank you. 
it's more of a share that you Poonam gave us that video of Rupert Spira when he is going those two different approaches when someone is angry you know how how to experience the anger and it's I don't know if Kimberly had a chance to listen to it but it changed my life such a simple exercise so in moments when I'm feeling something comes up so I have enough awareness that I'm feeling the the emotion like um impatience it's just impatience. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to feel agitated and I feel like my energy is being chopped all of a sudden instead of being very nice and solid. And if I act on that energy, I'm going to create more pain bodies, more, you know, um, chaos, all that um, heavy energy. But if I just sit with it and ask myself question, the question that Rupert Spira used, on whose behalf are you feeling this? All of a sudden, it disappears. It just, the whole idea is to catch that moment and just ask yourself that question and have it ready. It comes up, on whose behalf am I feeling it? Hmm, okay. <laughs> and it's just becoming that, you know, energy somewhere but it's not bad or good or you don't have to act on it it's just you're observing it and that brings you i don't know actually if that brings you to present moment or the present moment awareness brings you to that realization i don't know which comes first um chicken or the egg but it's fascinating it's fascinating so just wanted to share i know what's the name of that video but it was life changing for me. I know Michelle um, went off video, but she said uh, Michael Merdad rec recommends that you look at the emotion associated with whatever you are dreaming fear, love, resentment, etc. That's right, it's not, yeah, it's not, it's not really the, the events or the fact that you are real, it's just what the feeling is, right? Do you remember any feelings, Kimberly, from your dreams? Or it's just like events without good, bad, just indifferent? It depends on who is in my dreams with me. So the shared dreams, like I said, I did have them with my daughters. And in the past, yes, I did have them with both my ex-husbands before I met them. So, so, and then it just depends on who, who I'm thinking of, or if I talk like my mother, it's like, you know, she calls and it's like, I'm thinking of her. Then, then that night I would have a dream with her as she is giving me the mother, you know, lectures on my life. Uh, my father too, he, he, um, I talk to him every week and um, and my dreams with him, it's like going over things that we talked about, but it's the father lectures <laughs> of, of stuff. But yeah, that's, that's just something that um, it just depends on who I'm having the dreams with. And, and uh, half the time, you know, I don't get a chance to ask them if they have, you know, they, uh, we live in a different state my parents and, and me. So it's like, well, after I talk with them, then I have the dream. It's like, do I go and ask them or are they going to, cause they're, they're up in age seventies and eighties. So it's like, do I ask them or just, Hey, you know, I had this nice dream with them kind of reflected on what they told me to uh, do with my life, which parents like to do with their children, tell them what to do. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, it just depends on who I'm having the dream with. If I know the person, um, now dreams that I have that I don't know the people that are in there, that that's just amazing, you know, people and places. And, and like, it might be years later, then all of a sudden I would meet that person, I would be in that place. And it's like, that's where the deja vu comes in because it's like, well, I've been here before, you know, but I don't know, I've never physically been to a place, but I might've had a dream of it in the past. So that's just something that 
I have to um, really probably break out my dream journals again um, and uh, relook at them and what I did right and uh, going forward and seeing, seeing my, doing my own analysis of them. Beautiful. That's a good conclusion that um, maybe there is a connection and you may be able to see it now that you have more presence power. The analysis has to be done from your presence power. It cannot be done by your ego because the ego will kind of like wishy-washy. Ego, ego is like flip-floppy. It's just going to say, oh, this didn't happen or this happened it's going to make stories. The moment you see yourself making a story, then that's the ego. Did you have anything to say, Michelle? You've been very quiet. We read it's okay, your, I'm good. <laughs> we, we read your Michael Murdad uh, piece. I, I was actually watching him uh, recently. He had something about vortices and he said, so that's another area, like if you want to actually explore, find where there's a vortex um, here. And I don't know where, which part of the US or where you are located, uh, Kimberly, but supposedly Virginia Beach is a vortex. So you could actually go to that area and see if it helps you more in strengthening your presence power and more uh, insights come through when you're in that area. Like he said, uh, Sedona, a lot of people think it's Sedona, but Sedona is just like mini vortices. It's not like a major, uh, just like uh, the seven chakras in our body, there are seven uh, uh, vortices in on this planet. One of them being um, Terry Potter, who actually comes to our group meditation on Sundays, who's in the UK. She was posting pictures of Glastonbury. And this is the synchronicity I'm talking about. She posted pictures of Glastonbury maybe two or three days back. She's been continuously posting. And when I listened to this talk yesterday, he says Glastonbury is a vortex. The pyramid at Giza is a vortex. So those are the places that we can use if we have a good meditative practice, we can actually enhance our, you know, be in that area. But then if you don't have a good meditative practice, it can actually mentally disturb us as well. If it's a mentally disturbed person, it'll actually psychologically affect them tremendously. That's what even uh, Terry said about Glastonbury, that people who, are, uh, who have a mental uh, disturbance so um, the other thing that Patricia talked about diet, have you looked at diet? That you want to change your diet and see if that'll make an, any kind of difference in your presence power? Um, medically, I had to change my diet because of my health issues. So I, I can't, it's been over 10 years since I had steak. So no red meats, no hamburgers, um, turkey and chicken, but I've recently added plant protein shakes. So, um, and I kind of switched to like um, frozen vegetables more so. Um, so I've, I've, I know to, uh, so I, not, I, I can't remember how long ago I read this, but when you go to be a, a vegan or a, a vegetarian, you raise your vibration in your body. So the red meats, the, the animal products, those are those keep you at a low frequency. Um, so I kind of eliminated, like I eliminated um, a lot of meats um, recently. So, so it's just uh, keeping um, my, uh, I switched to almond milk too, because I couldn't tolerate the dairy uh, milk anymore. So that kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm noticing a difference, but it's, it's just going with the plants and vegetables more so in my diet. Beautiful. You're going down the right path for sure. Uh, somebody put something in the chat. Uh, Francesca, you were saying uh, it's the talk about trauma that you shared Poonam. 
man's name is Peter. Oh, yeah, the video I was referencing earlier, because he spoke deeply about dreams in part of that talk. I think you had shared, you're the one that shared the video. Um, is it Rupert Spiro's video? I think it's Rupert. It might be Rupert. I don't know why the name Peter came to me, but yeah, it's about trauma. But he talks about the different layers of the mind. And when he, okay. in that talk, okay. yes, he refers okay. to dreams okay. and he explains it in great details. And actually, um, he's right. Like his, his whole talk, I, I actually love his talk. I saved it. I just don't remember his name. <laughs> it's Rupert Spira um, in the same talk where he talks about this uh, beach, um, like, you know, trauma. Somebody is asking him this question about trauma. Thank you, Francesca, for reminding me about that. What he says is uh, our, uh, our mental body is like a circle. Think of it as a small circle, which is perforated, right? And then there is another circle, which is our um, uh, something like a karmic body. Um, there's another bigger circle between the bigger circle and the inner circle, which is our ego mind or mental state. Outside of a mental state is the trauma. And that's what we want to pull and what we are going to use is and then he says out, out of these two circles, there's a huge big circle, which is the awareness, the consciousness. So you're going to use the consciousness to actually pull the trauma into your real, I mean, instead of being outside the circle, because it's perforated, right? You're going to pull it into your present state. That's what he explained, right, Francesca? That was what he was, and that's the thing that he said, use your awareness to wash it down, warm water of awareness to wash down. It's like a stick figure, the trauma. Somebody said, how do I handle my trauma? And, that, and I can send it to you, Kimberly, on Messenger. If you're on Messenger, I can tag you on that uh, video. But it was a really good video on how do you handle trauma or bring it into your uh, conscious awareness. Because just like yes. Eckhart says, right? The pain body does not dissolve unless we bring it attention. And uh, what Eckhart calls pain body, um, I feel medical medium actually calls it um, uh, toxin because of an adrenaline uh, release, like uh, adrenaline. Um, so when we experience trauma, um, it almost is, we are sitting in a chair and something like, you know, uh, we're sitting in a chair and a coworker is irritating us, right? And that can trigger us and become traumatic. But it's not like we are out in the wild, a lion is attacking us. But the adrenaline that we're going to release at that point in time is almost equivalent to as though we are being attacked by a lion. So our body does not know how to process that adrenaline. And so it stores it. And I feel that is what uh, Eckhart calls the pain body. All that stored toxin, toxicity is in our body. And that's what's going to cause all kinds of pain, like different kinds of pain, physical pain in the body as well. So processing that, so the cleansing routine, that's why we were suggesting doing medical medium. Uh, the more you cleanse, the more lighter your body will become. And then you'll become more and more available as you're trying these meditative practices and trying to get to the Akashic field. You were going to say something, Patricia? Just that Rupert Spira has such incredible way with describing, right? The metaphors of how this works, something so that you practically you can't use words to describe it. He finds simple words and puts it on, maybe it's his presence when he does it, that like hits you. It's like, wow. it's like an awe. Wow. And then you can use it immediately, immediately on yourself. You know, it's true to the deepest core of your essence. You know that what he said, you actually experienced it many times. It's incredible. 
So yes, it's definitely the best um, video on trauma that I've ever seen. Like I've seen a lot, you know, different people explaining different. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm biased, maybe I like it because he sounds the way I, I can tell he was describing it from his experience of these different states of consciousness and, and the depth of understanding of the arising, the actual arising of the ego mind, what triggers it, what causes it to arise, and the role of the subconscious programs that, you know, how they arise and, 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 and actually even the role between the egoic state of mind and the, the, the subconscious conscious mind and because one of the things I've I've experienced and, and realized through my own evolving is that you know I, I'm guilty of it too so don't get me wrong I've you know we it's easy to quickly blame the ego like you know it's the ego's mind it's the ego this you know it's the ego that that does this but what I found out um, in relation to the subconscious mind it's sneakier than the ego because sometimes what we how we we show up and the, the things that we do is actually not an arising of the egoic state of mind. It's a subconscious pain body. You know, I call it the pain body mind. So that's program that has become triggered. So it's like sitting there, you know, waiting, something external happened, then that program itself becomes triggered. And then now the mind kicks in and it starts to make stories around it. So it's why I call it sneaky. I call it the sneaky little devil. Like I, I you know, some, and I should probably stop calling my, my states of my names. <laughs> but I giggle when, when I do that, you know, because I'd be like, whoa, okay, so this isn't, this isn't the ego. And then, you know, and, and one of the things I practice too is gratitude, right? Is when those, when, I'm, when I become aware of those arising, right away, I give it gratitude right? And I say, thank you. You know, I always thank the subconscious for showing me how you feel, for showing me that program, you know, within me that's causing this situation or whatever it is to arise. So that's why I like his video so much, because he talks about the different layers of the mind and then the, you know, the interconnection between those layers and so forth. He goes really, really deep. And, and then the link to the, you know, the, the, the field of the quantum field. And it's actually, I'm fascinated by this video just for the record, because I'm like, whoa, you know? Yeah, yeah. The best thing he said in that video is if you heal your trauma because you're connected to the collective mind, because you're perforated, right? Your mind is a circle that's perforated. You're healing the trauma in everybody else's mind. So yes. you're doing such incredible work, Kimberly, that you are feeling, I mean, all of you have done it, but just to see you take that uh, courageous step that, you know, what happens with trauma is, and those kind of experiences is our uh, pain body and ego will say, don't go there. It's too hurtful. Don't go there. I cannot go there. I cannot go there. But if we know of our presence power, this the big circle, right? If we know of on whose behalf am I saying I cannot go there? If we get in touch with the whose behalf, who is this I that cannot go there? The moment we know this I, we can do anything. We can go there and be okay with it, experience it completely, experience it almost like a lucid uh, movie, like as though it's happening now, and it will be okay, because you'd see the wisdom this time, because you have presence power, you will see the wisdom of it. Uh, in, in that, um, I'll bring up what Dr. Joe Dispenza, since we are talking about different teachers, and we brought this up, right? He has a video on forgiveness, and there was this, um, <clears throat> excuse me, on, in that video, he talks about that this uh, woman, um, she was, I think, raped by three people, three men, and uh, she went through trauma, like, um, 
brutally raped or something and she went through anxiety she she was she became agoraphobic she wouldn't get out anywhere she didn't want to see anybody um she became very isolated right and so uh, she goes through the whole meditative process with uh, dr judith spencer and has this en enlightening experience and when she connects with the divine um uh what message she got from the divine was i sent you three angels to bring you to this state when we know that those they were three angels right we we may label them as oh that person did this to me but when we can know that out of that trauma now we are coming to the spiritual process now uh, you know we can go lifetime after lifetime unconscious but all of each and every one of you is taking this opportunity to open up connect be your true self be who you truly are and that is what the mystery is about that's what each one of you is a sage in itself each one of you is touching that mystical dimension and that's all there was to it this whole journey of whatever we experience it was so that we could be this mystical self be the healer as uh, dr judith spencer says right and the the day that we know we are healer is we are being compassionate no matter what happens there's loving kindness compassion and infinite gratitude like gratitude for the past gratitude for each and every experience that happened in the past thank you thank you for giving me that lesson when we can come to that point then we feel we mastered the past by the way he has a lot of uh, walking meditations dr jo dispenza has walking meditations and his walking meditation number 1 does that you walk and you say i'm leaving my past behind and i'm walking into my future i'm leaving my past behind and you make your body walk into step into that future that no longer are you the past you are the new you and look what miracles you can bring once you are the new you right okay at um lakshmi by the way said that her teacher like if you everybody go in and read the comments because lakshmi cecil summer have been um asking questions but lakshmi says that her teacher can read the akashic field so are you wanting to have your akashic field read as it relates to you kimberly yes if that's possible <laughs> okay so do you know lakshmi's uh, you may want to message lakshmi or do you want me to connect the two of you could you connect us okay so she has a teacher that can read the akashic field and so maybe you'll get some insights on who you were or what you were right perfect awesome thank you awesome i think patricia has to go it's been more than an hour it's getting late incredibly amazing thank you so much kimberly for your vulnerability and courage normally it is patricia bringing up all these kind of questions but we are so it's a honor and a privilege to have all of you here as well as cecil and summer and lakshmi that have been online and everyone else christina that have been online so many blessings much love have a good evening and much love to ken as well and sri lakshmi that's been here all this time with us many blessings sri lakshmi bye